Okay, last session. Uh, thank you all for sticking around this long. Uh, our final session covers something that might not traditionally be thought of as, as biochemistry, but is very important to everything that we do. And that's uh, using the literature and in particular using EndNote. And so while almost every session in this, this you know, program allow, or emphasizes tools that are freely available, this is the one session that emphasizes something that might not be freely available. Uh, but when, when I was thinking about what sessions to include several years ago, uh, this was one that I thought was worth it because uh, I think EndNote is well worth the investment of, of money. And so EndNote is not a free program. Uh, we used to have access to it for free here at the university, but then they've you know, changed some licensing and things like that. But, but I still think it's highly recommended. And hopefully, uh, after our esteemed speaker, Joanna, um, shows you a little bit of the features and the things that you can do with it, uh, you'll appreciate not only how to better read and use the scientific literature, but also how to use EndNote to make your life much, much easier uh, when writing a paper or when trying to do any other kind of report. And so I'll turn it over to her. This is uh, Joanna Shu. She's a postdoc in my lab, uh, very, very productive and, and, uh, and engaged postdoc. So um, you know, I'll, I'll let her take it away. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon. How are you doing? Are you excited about the final session? So yeah, today um, I'll discuss how to search literature using different databases and how to use one of the most um, popular reference management um, software, EndNote. So, uh, so when you come to a research group, you, uh, you're about to start your research or you finish up, you want to publish your work, your advisor will usually ask you to go to the literature. But seriously, when you work on your work, why do we need to care about um, searching other people's work or citing other people's work correctly? Do you have any opinions? There? The. <laughs> Oh, they want you to speak up a little bit. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, so I, I, okay, so I, I'm asking, like, why searching other people's work or citing other people's work is important for your own research? Like, why do we care about this topic? Yes. Yes, we we want to know what other people have done in your field, and that's a context of what your work will be. Um, it's also later here in the field that you sort of want to learn more about the field. Yeah, you want to get some new ideas about your work. Yes. Uh, any other opinions? Yeah, exactly. So it will help you to evaluate your own work. And um, so I think it's also very important um, so, uh, for you to uh, also demonstrate the importance of your work. Because if you imagine you can find multiple reference in your field and good reference from reputable journals, that means your work, a lot of people care about your work. And also, very importantly, uh, we need to give the credits to the people, and we don't want to just get information from, uh, from them. So one day when you put a lot of effort and publish your work, you don't want other people just to take your sentences without mention, mentioning you. So, and 
Another point is you want to avoid uh, plagiarism by citing other people's work. So uh, there are, so this is uh, referred to the literature. So literature uh, is scholarly publication that report original, original work in uh, academic field. And there are two major type of literature. Primary literature refers to um, where people will publish uh, original research data when, like when you go to a lab and produce new data and then you publish it, that, that is a primary literature. And second literature refers to review articles. So in these articles, they will not um, present original data, but they will cite a lot of other people's work and give you a nice summary about that field. So these two, type, uh, these two types of literature are very important. And in some uh, journals, you may also find at, uh, in each new issue, there will be some editorials, opinion, or perspective um, uh, papers. So these are special type of literature. Uh, most of them do not present new data, but um, they may cite a few other people's work and then provide perspective about the future direction in that field. And also there are like multiple types of informal publications, like chain publications where you can find updated news or new product or new technique in the field. And there are many scientific blogs out there where you can keep up with the news in the field. And technical reports, um, they provide details about experimental um, details about a product or a technique. So they are usually sponsored by a company or something, but they're not evaluated by a third party. And yeah, conference Proceedings are uh, just a published record of who presented in a talk. And if you go to a talk, they may publish uh, the title of your talk or the abstract. And but yeah, it's a more casual setting for scientists to present their work, other than formal publications. And yeah, also there are books and dissertations. But so. There are all these kind of information presented to us, but when we decide whether to cite a paper or publication, um, we need to think about uh, a few factors, like are this source credible? Like, or can citing this work enhance my work? Because when you cite a paper, and if you, uh, you, if you, you make sure it's a good citation, it can actually enhance your work. So, but there is a web, but for me, honestly, I, I mostly only cite primary and review articles, and probably sometimes test books um, or perspectives if I need to comment on the future of the field. But I rarely cite uh, those informal publications because there is one very important process that is involved in the primary and secondary literature that is missing in those informal literature. Do you know what is that? What, it's, what process is missing in trade publication, technical reports, or a blog post? Would it be that peer review? Yes, exactly. That's the peer review process. So where the editor will send out your work to be reviewed by other professors in the world. And so that process actually makes the primary and secondary literature more, credi more credible than the others. So when you want to cite a work in your work, you need to think about like how can you use the citations to enhance your own work. And um, so, and I will introduce several uh, search databases um, to do this literature search. So, the first one is PubMed, 
uh, Dr. Fiske already introduced substantially about this one, so I will not uh, do too much about it. So I will just show you if you put in some keywords. And then you, you can get the results. So the, um, again, the key advantage of PubMed is um, it's free because it's sponsored by the US government using our taxpayers' dollars. So uh, they, these articles are made free, I think at least for two years after it's published. But if you go, um, so if you go into a specific uh, publication, and then uh, you can download the free PDF version of it, or you can go to this, you, you can go to the original journal that this work is published in, but you need subscription um, to, to obtain a PDF in this journal. And then, but um, the, the limitation of PubMed is it only covers the topic in biomedical and related fields. So if you are interested in, in organic synthesis, you cannot find any publications in PubMed. So the second one is uh, Scopus. Scopus actually is the, I, I have it open, yeah, here. So actually it's a subscription-based service, so you need to have subscription through your institution. And MSU is a subscriber, but you have to be on campus and log in um, with your campus email to be able to use it. The advantage of this, um, this search engine is it covers basically every topic so uh, it's not only the biomedical uh, publications. And then, uh, yeah, to search is very simple, as you guys can see. And then you can build uh, your, build your uh, search fields using this. Yeah, and oh. I make a typo. Let's say I search uh, protein corollas, and then you can uh, you can also refine your search using these uh, areas on the left. So another advantage of Scopus is it also shows what papers are cited in a specific uh, publication, so you can is it you can get as to this. Um, list of reference very easily. And then you can also, if you want to keep updated to the uh, advance of the field, you may want to see uh, what later paper have cited this work. So you can go and read this paper. So it's very recent, yeah, in this year. So you, you, then you, you will know what is new about this field um, in this year. And then uh, the third one is Sign Finder. Let me type here, Sign. So as you can see, um, it is provided by CAS, C-A-S. And then, um, yeah, you can, you can do a search here. It also provides a very comprehensive search results, um, yeah. And, uh, and oh, one advantage of this is um, because it's provided by CAST, so you can actually search uh, not only by keywords, but also by chemical structures. You can uh, use ChemDraw to draw your chemical compound that you're interested in and draw it here and do search. Or if you are interested in some, you can put, put in a molecular formula like this example. And probably you are curious what work has been done using this chemical. And then you can go in and see, oh, here there is zero reference. 
and but this one have have two reference. Then you can go and if you will want to spe uh, specify this, you can, or you can just get uh, hit get. So yeah, this is a paper that is related to this compound. Um, yeah. And yeah, also you need to uh, log in with your MSU account or if your institute has subscribed to Sci Sci Finder, you have to log in to be able to use it. Um, the next one is uh, Google Scholar. This one I use it very frequently because it's very convenient and sometimes uh, it's useful in the sense that you can search some very old articles that is not available in more recent databases like the previous ones. Uh, so you may be able to, to find it uh, on Google Scholar. But you need to be aware that the search result may not be as comprehensive or as accurate as the other database like Sign Finders or Scopers can give you. And then, yeah, I want to share some tips for searching the literature and what we need to consider. Um, so first is uh, start with a review. So review article is very good and actually it takes a lot of effort for, for the authors to write a review article, although they don't produce new data. So let's see what a review article looks like. So I will go to chemical reviews. Yeah, and uh, particularly if you are new to the field and you don't know where to start or you want to write a paper and you're struggling with the introduction, it's always good to start with a review because as you can see, um, the, there are a lot of contents in the review and it provides a very comprehensive introduction uh, to summarize the field and give you the overview and uh, inside a lot, a lot of other people's work in the field. And normally these works, these papers are important papers in that field. And you may want to uh, take a deeper look at them. So you can see like in this example, how many uh, figures there are. It's a very long paper, so yeah, 35 figures, even more. So are you more willing to do your own work or write a review article? So, and you can see, um, see how many reference. Yeah, there are 300, more than 300 reference in the review article. I think that would be enough to cover your base if you want to write yeah, why a report about your summer project? <laughs> it's, Please. Yes, and oh, also about review article, you also want to see what the date that it is published. So the more recent, the better, because it, uh, it's a, again, the summary of the field. You, do, you don't want to read an outdated version about the field, so if the review is not that up to date, you may need to do more search and see what papers have cited this review article. Yeah, and then take a look. Yeah, uh, the second point is science is a web, so all publications, they are interconnected, and the, the more recent ones will cite older ones and and if you want to keep up what is going on in the field you can also um, yeah see what are the recent papers in the field like what I show you in uh, scopers uh, yeah you, you can always that yeah you can always see 
uh, yeah, uh, what papers have cited this paper of interest? And the next point is uh, citations count. So uh, how do you decide whether to cite a paper? Uh, or what is the criteria for a good paper? So citation is a good number to, to reference to because uh, the more citation means that the quality of that work is good and a lot of people uh, have uh, referenced to that work. So, uh, yeah, and, and you can find high impact publications uh, using scopers by sorting the number by, uh, by the number of citations. Then uh, again, uh, the quality of citations in your paper can reflect the quality of your own work. You, it can uh, either enhance or degrade your work. So yeah, we need to uh, just cite the correct reference. But uh, to watch out, so review articles, as you can see, yeah, it, it's a great article. So uh, it tend to attract a lot of citations. So uh, if you just sort out by cite the number of citations, you may get most of the review articles. Yeah, but if you want to find original papers, then you need to take a deeper look. Oh, and um, Another parameters I can think of is called impact factor. Do you know what is that? No? So uh, impact factor is another uh, parameter. Uh, uh, it's not for that paper, it's for the, the journal, particular journal. So um, for example, if I want to know an impact factor of a journal, I can just Google it like Jax. impact factor, so it's already here. So this is a very high impact factor. We will say uh, an impact factor of, of three uh, can represent a decent journal. So this has 14. So the high imp so impact factor, if you're curious, you can Google uh, how it, it is calculated. I think it's calculated by the total number of citations for that uh, particular journal in a year. Uh, and compare that num and compare the number from the previous year. So the higher the impact factor means that uh, the journal has more citations and more influential. Yeah, but I, I will not go too crazy about this uh, parameter. Yeah, some people are uh, like impact factor is everything to them. Like in uh, in China, you cannot graduate with your PhD if you don't publish. Um, an impact factor above five, something like that. But impact factor is also uh, the, um, uh, defined by how hot the field you are working on. So if you happen to uh, work on a popular field, then you may be able to get published in a high impactful journal easily. But a less, uh, a less impactful or less uh, popular work doesn't mean that it's not important. And then look at the reference list. So um, sometimes when you find a publication, and probably the results are not that relevant to your own work, but, uh, but you can make use of it in another way. Like if I'm studying the interaction of gonadal particle and protein, but I find an article that studied uh, polystyrene nanoparticle. So obviously I cannot just cite their, or compare uh, their results, but I can, but it's, they are both in the field of bio, biomedicine and they both study nanoparticles and protein. So uh, I would imagine that the introduction in that paper will be useful for me. And I can always see how they like how they build up the stage to talk about their research, and so in this case, the reference list can be useful. And you may sign the you may sign similar reference as they do, because you are in a similar field. 
and then don't be an age discriminator. So because um, uh, I know we all want to cite more recent works to show, okay, this field is still very attractive to people and very popular, but if you have to sign an old paper, please do. And especially it's well cited. Like if I want to cite a work that talks about basic HSQC animal experiment, I may need to go, to, go back to the 50s or 60s and find that original paper. And because we need to make sure the credits go to the right people, if those are the people that first did the work, we need to cite them and give them credit. So if you cannot um, find, if it's very old paper and you can find in uh, databases, you can try uh, Google Scholar. And if you cannot find it, you can, yeah, go to a library or ask your advisor, yeah, if there's a uh, old paper. Yeah, the last point is ask for help. So if you are new to the field and you don't want to just search, it's, all, it's all, probably uh, time efficient, then you just ask your advisor or the graduate student in your lab because they work in the field probably for your advisor, maybe a decade, yeah, more than you. So yeah, he or she may just throw you some uh, critical reference for you to read, and then you don't have to spend the effort and, and, and do the search. So, and for yourself, you can always uh, subscribe. You can subscribe to the uh, the updates of a journal that you're interested in. Like for example, um, for ACS journals, I think I have. Uh, yeah, you can go to the right here, and you can set up e alert. Yeah, and you can pick the, the journal that you're interested in and they will send you an email with the link uh, or emails every day or every week, depending on your preference, to show you those uh, ASAP articles. So yeah, RSS feed is uh, very uh, popular. Um, like subscription is free, is like subscription service. It stands for really simple syndic uh, syndication. So uh, let me demonstrate how to, uh, what is it? So like in PubMed, so just now I, uh, I perform a search and then here you can say, see uh, the button create RSS so you can, uh, so this is the name of RSS feed, and then if you hit create, it will create a link. So you can either save this link and check it every day to see, um, to, to see any updated publications uh, regarding your search, or you can set up email here, and then uh, once you, you put in this email, you will receive an email like every day or every week and displacing the, the reference to you. Yeah, but if you are interested in multiple journals and you set up RSS for multiple uh, like search services and you don't want to get uh, like disturbed by multiple emails, then you can use this Feedly. Uh, it, uh, it is um, yeah, another free service and it compiles the, uh, the feeds from a variety of sources. So if you have your laptop, we can go to Feedly and yeah, see how we can compile uh, those alerts.
Um, so you need to create uh, an account, and then you will go to this interface. So for example, uh, just now I, yeah, I did a search on PubMed, and I created a RSS link. So in this case, I just copy, and then I can create a fit here. Let's say uh, nanoparticle and protein. And then add content. So I just paste the link I just copied from PubMed, and then enter and then follow. So you can see uh, it will show up here. And, and if you're interested in like uh, ACS publication, you can also go here again and create that uh, RSS. Say I am interested in biochemistry. And yeah, because I open Fitly, so it will automatically link to Fitly. And then I just click this, and then I, so it will show up in Fitly. And if I hit follow, uh, and then give it a name, biochemistry, and then create, so you will see it's it show up here. So you can just uh, compile all the RSS that you're interested in uh, within Feedly. So every day or every few days, you just go to Feedly and then you can check what are the updates about your search. Any questions? No? OK. OK, so let's jump to EndNote. Uh, have you installed EndNote? Or have, how many of you have used it? OK, a few. Um, yeah, so I just want to show uh, some uh, basic tricks about using EndNote. So uh, yeah, so EndNote is a software that can help you to uh, Format in the in-text citations and the reference list that you that you will normally see uh, at the end of a publication. So when you when you want to write your own manuscript, you uh, you don't have to type um, yeah those reference by yourself. And Note will do the work for uh, for you. And and Note can also be used as a personal database for you to put the reference in. If you read the paper today, and you can start to use EndNote and put that, uh, put that citation into EndNote. So probably 10 years, 10 years later, and oh, you, you think of this paper, and then you go to your EndNote library, and you can search this, pa this paper. So it can be a wonderful personal uh, database for you uh, as you um, as you proceed with your research career. Advantages of EndNote, so um, yeah, again, it can automatically insert uh, and format the citations and reference uh, into your paper. And especially, it is especially useful when you, uh, you if you originally want to publish in one journal and then you change your mind. So different journals will have different uh, requirements for, the, for their references. And in this way, you can just reformat all the reference and citations with, with um, a note with only one button. And also, you can also tag the citations with your own keywords for you to uh, search, search it more easily later on. And yeah, you can you can search uh, within your EndNote library, and then you can also do uh, you can sort the library by 
uh, different parameters like authors or date or title. Okay, so uh, let me go to a note. So first, uh, I want to create a new library. So just hit new and then uh, give it a name, test. And then we save it here. Okay, so this is the library that I just created and there is there are zero reference in there. So, so there are two ways to input a reference. First thing is, uh, yeah, pretty dumb. You just open, um, you just hit this, you just hit this button and then you can open a blank uh, reference page and then you can just type every piece of information into it. Uh, I, so I, I never do this because I'm not a careful person. And um, I think you, in these days, you only need to do this when uh, the, the reference is pretty old and then you cannot find a digital citation of it or you want to cite a submitted work that is not being published. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you don't have to do this. So a more common way to do is, let me find the paper. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, so in these days, uh, there are digital citations uh, attached to every paper online. Like for ACS, you will look for this export uh, icon. So you can just download the citation. And for other databases, probably the it's not export, but you always try to look for words like tools or site. And yeah, you will almost always can find uh, this digital citation. And then you, you can just download it and click on it. Yeah, so it will appear here. And it will have all the information plugged in. Okay. So, uh, and no can work with Word. So one advantage is when you have and no installed and it will link to Word and actually you can find a tab for your EndNote. So, um, and when you open a Word, it will automatically looking for any open uh, EndNote library and try to link with it. So do not, uh, do not open too many EndNote library when you're working on your Word. Just leave uh, only one open. And yeah, so uh, for example, you're writing your instruction. Let's write something uh, like biochemistry is fun. Yeah, and then here you want to find some reference to support your statement. So I want to uh, insert a reference like this one and to insert it, click this button and then it will, and there is a, a bibliography show up here and then you can, um, you can change the style. So there is a pop-up button here and then you can, yeah, you can, you can change the title for the uh, bibliography title and yeah, and also you can change the style uh, of your references. Like if I change to ACS style, 
this will yeah become a subscript number. So uh, the style is defined by what journal you want to publish in, and usually uh, you don't invent the whole style by yourself. You just download the style provided by the journal. So normally, if you go to like author information, and then there will be uh, an EndNote style for you to download, and then you just load it into EndNote. Uh, let me see if I remember where right? it is. So if you download, you download a uh, EndNote style, and then you need to go to your C drive and program files and your EndNote. So there is a folder called styles. So uh, the file that is ended with ENS is a style file. So you can just put, drag that uh, style file here. And, and then it will show up uh, in the options that you can choose. So here, uh, yeah, if you put that style in that folder, it will show up here, and then you can change. And then to change, to change a, a style like I just did, uh, can come. So you just hit this update citations. Oh, yeah, it's, it, so it will, it will update. Okay, we covered this. Uh, yeah, uh, a few things you need to pay attention when you work with uh, and know with your word. So uh, you can, uh, so here you can use unformatted citations, which is useful. So. Uh, so if I change to unformatted citations, you can see if when I click on the citation, there is no gray, uh, there is no gray area. So if I change it back to formatted citation, you see there, when you cl click on it, it will appear in like gray shadow. That and if you click on it, if your your manuscript is long, it will jump to the references. So this means there is some kind of hyperlink uh, created by EndNote. And when you want to share uh, your manuscript or EndNote library, uh, or if you want to use uh, this, and if you try to modify your Word document using the track changes functions, um, using formatted EndNote, uh, EndNote format can uh, give you some trouble. So uh, when you want to share your Word document with other people, you may want to um, just use unformatted EndNote uh, format here. So you can just convert to, convert to uh, the unformatted format, and the, uh, when the other people, they open your document, they can uh, do their uh, no formatting by themselves. Okay, placement of references. So, yeah, here are two examples, like where, where should you put your citation? Uh, is, should that be before or after the period of punctuation. So that also depends on the style and which journal you want to publish. Like for the number, uh, for the subscript number style, it should be placed after the period. And if for this parenthesis style, it should be uh, before the period. So yeah. And if you want to uh, cite multiple references at the same place, you need to pay attention to uh, space. Like, let's download another one. Okay. 
So let's download another uh, citation. So let's say here, uh, so I want to uh, insert another citation here. So, but if I type a space and then uh, insert, so this is not right because these two references are separated. Um, yeah, if I convert to unformatted, you will see there is a space there, so this is not right. And if I delete this space, yeah, so you can see uh, there is a comma between these two references, means they are together. So yeah, this is the correct way. And when you finish and you're about to submit your work, it's better to remove all the markup. So the way to remove, because now you can see there is linkage uh, in these citations, and you, you may want to uh, remove this linkage. So to do that, uh, you need to choose this convert to plain text. And then it will ask you to save this document and it will create a new document without any linkage for you to submit. But you want to save this first. Okay, so when you save that one, a new one is created, it's a new document, and it doesn't have any hyperlink in it. So this is a good document for you to submit. Okay, so uh, if you are familiar with what I did just now, they're just basic uh, EndNote skills, and then we can go to uh, some more advanced EndNote topics. So the first topic is how to manage the capitalization about the, the title. Let me see. So like uh, this title, you can bring up this preview uh, of the, the reference uh, in the, with the style you choose, and you can see this is the uh, publication title. And uh, for some journals, they want uh, the they want like a headline capitalization, like every word in the title, the first letter should be uh, should be capitalized. So uh, I will show you how to do that. Uh, so to do it, let's see. So to do that, go to edit, and then uh, output styles, and then edit, edit ACS style, which is style that I'm using right now. So uh, to control uh, the, the title, yeah, here. It's under bibliography and title capitalization. So here you can choose leave, leave title as entered, or headline style title. So headline style title is what I mentioned moments ago, like uh, the first letter of every word should be capitalized. And sentence style capitalization, just like is the, the, the letter of the first word of the sentence is capitalized. So I will choose this, and then I close, and then it will ask you whether to save, and yes. So, yeah, now you can, from the preview, you can see um, like a, the, the letter of every word is capitalized. And then, let me see. Um, yeah, but uh, there is a drawback about that uh, algorithm is for some special terms like 
anymore. Or uh, C13, we don't, we, don't want, we don't want them to become like this. We don't want just the um, first letter to be capitalized. Or in other words, uh, we don't want a node to change them for us. So we want to fix the case uh, for these words. So the um, so what we use is called en case. So I will show you how to do that. Um, you can you can fix those terms manually by going to edit and then preferences. Yeah, I already have uh, the list here. But if you have uh, a new word that you want to fix, and then you can type here and then add to the list. So next time, uh, and no, we'll, we'll not change these, uh, these letters for you. Or, um, yeah, Dr. F if you go to the biochemistry website, Dr. Fiske have uh, provided um, uh, this TXT file, ENK's TXT. So he, yeah, I think he curated over the years and then you, it's very convenient for you to just import this list and then, yeah, you don't have to invent the whole list by yourself. So, and how to import this list is, uh, so if you are using Windows, you just uh, go to the folder percentage app data per percentage. Yeah, this is the, the location you want to go to. Um, and then you can find a note folder here. And then, yeah, I already have this uh, TXT file here. But for you, you can just download it and drag it into this folder. So um, it, will, it will be imported into your EndNote. OK. So uh, another subject is about the abbreviation of uh, journal titles. Because for many uh, journals, they want to save space. For some journals, you don't even have to worry about the, the article title because they don't want the article title to be shown in the references. And the same thing goes to the uh, journal name. So some may want you to show the whole thing, but most of the journals will wish you to use a, an abbreviated uh, journal name. Like, uh, yeah, example, Journal of the American Chemical Society should be abbreviated. Um, I don't think it's just, but yeah, uh, in a specific way. So uh, to do that in EndNote, um, again, go to edit styles and then edit ACS style. So yeah, this tab journal names is to control uh, the format of the journals. So you can choose use full name or uh, use abbreviation one. By convention, I think abbreviation one has a period and uh, abbreviation two is without period. And choose that and exit, save. Uh, okay, so it doesn't work. So why does, doesn't it work? It's because this abbreviated format is not in your EndNote. So EndNote has its own database for all the abbreviations of the journals, but it's not updated. So that's why you need to, sometimes you need to manually do this. Um, let me see. So to, do, to uh, do this, we need to use a function called term list. And so how to edit a term list? Uh, so in this time, we go to tools and then open term list. So you can see um, 
for the for Journal of American Chemical Society, there is no the abbreviation one and two, they are blank. So it means it's not in the database. And you can, so you need to edit these term list and put into the abbreviation yourself. So how do you know what is the correct abbreviated form? The answer is to Google it. You see a lot of people Google it, so it's, it's usually the second option. So yeah, here is the correct form. So you just copy it and then put there. Make sure the abbreviation one has period after each word and abbreviation two has no period. And then hit OK. Yeah, and close. Yeah, and then you refresh now. Um, yeah, it's in this form. And also, yeah, Dr. Fiske provide you a very useful uh, list. He has his own uh, term list txt file. So yeah, you don't have to do all the, all the Google by yourself. You just need to import this list. And yeah, it has a lot of abbreviations uh, in it, but there are many new journals come up every year. So yeah, sometimes you need to do this manually. So you can download this from the website. Um, Let me see. So to you can import this. Uh, yeah, go to define term list and journals, and then import list. So you can uh, click on Dr. Fiske's term list txt file, and then you can just import it, and it will be updated. So like more than 7,000 items has been inserted into your EndNote. Yeah. And yeah, also there are a lot that you can do um, by modifying this, the, the style of EndNote. Um, Yeah, like you can define the author list. Like uh, uh, if you don't want to show all the author, you can choose this uh, to control. It only shows the authors. Or you can, uh, yeah, you can change uh, the, the name of the authors. Yeah, and there are a lot of templates um, in EndNote for different, for different types of literature, but uh, again, I think uh, you can just go to your target journal and then download that style and use that. Yeah, you can just uh, play with these different functions. Yeah, so uh, when you share uh, a node library, um, let me see if I... Yeah, so when I create this test and no library, it will create a folder called test.data. And if you want to share this library, it's better to share this folder uh, as well. And then uh, also you can, uh, yeah, you can compress the libraries and then, yeah, and then in, in Word, uh, what you can do is export to EndNote. So like if you finish this manuscript and then you want to create a library for this one, then you, you can export to EndNote and it will export, oh, here. 
you can ex uh, export uh, a new and new library or incorp or update an existing one. Yeah, so I think that's the tricks I want to share today. And to summarize, yeah, reading literature is very important and make sure you cite the correct and good reference to your work. Because you want to show people you write a statement, you, just, you are not just making something up. And you also can help your readers to locate the sources of the information that you are writing. And uh, please cite primary and secondary literature. And if you don't, uh, if you are not familiar with that journal, you just Google it, probably Google its impact factor, or uh, try to see the number of citations of that publication to see whether that is a reputable work for you to cite. And yeah and use a note and yeah, play with it and practice. Yeah, that's all. Uh, have any questions? Why do you think EndNote is the best tool, uh, not Zotero or Mandalay. I mean, I'm using Mandalay and it's more practical than EndNote. And when I'm writing paper or assignment, the key things for me to, if it's practical or not, because you are really in stress, under stress, and you want to get it done as, uh -huh. as much as possible. So uh, I have no idea about EndNote. I have never used it. I used uh, Mandalay. And for me, it's more practical. That's the reason I'm choosing it. But why do you think it's the best tool? What makes it superior? That's what I'm wondering. Uh, to be <laughs> to be honest, I never use Medley. So yeah, Dr. Vizky can answer you. Yeah, I can I can answer a little bit. I haven't used Mendeley. Uh, I will be honest with with you on that that one. I have used Zotero quite a bit, and I like a lot of things about Zotero, particularly the ability to just go to a website, click on it, and, and all of a sudden the reference is right there. Um, I don't think that Zotero's integration with Microsoft Word is anywhere close to what EndNote can do in terms of its flexibility or its ability to uh, generate really professionally done term lists. Mendeley, I, again, I haven't used it. Uh, I've done some reading on it because, again, it, when, when you're turning down something that's free, you always want to kind of have a good reason, right? And Mendeley, at least at this institution, is provided for free. Uh, the main reason I haven't used it is because at one time, and I'm not sure if it's still true, you could not easily search all of the PDFs that you've collected, right? So if I have, you know, a library with a thousand references, and there's, and all of those references have PDFs associated with them, EndNote will let me actually search the text of all of those PDFs. So if I want to find every reference in my library that contains you know, let's say I'm looking for the author de Groot, right? I can search for that, and even if it's not in the abstract, if it's not in the title, if it's not in one of the major fields, it will find it because it's indexed every single piece of text in all of those PDFs. And that was a feature that, that is, is really important to me because it saves time in searching, but then it's also something that I, at one time, at least, Mendeley did not have. So. Um, but, but I think, you know, if, if, if you're comfortable with Mendeley, if, if you're very happy with it, I think it's fine. Um, and maybe at some point I will try using Mendeley and see if, see if I could see it as a, as a replacement. But so far, I think um, EndNote has been really, I've been really happy with it. And, and particularly, you know, going beyond simply putting references into the back of a paper or a journal publication, keeping that library that you're going to curate and keep with you year after year after year, um, EndNote, I think, is a little bit better for that. 